What up, PC Youth? Happy Friday to you. It is July 24th, and I hope that you guys are doing good. Thank you so much for joining me today, and um, I really want you to focus in. It's only going to be a few minutes, a short devotional. We're beginning today a short three-week mini-series devotional uh, this Friday, so today, next Friday, and the Friday after that. And I really want to encourage you to tune in each and every single week for the next three weeks, okay? And uh, we're going to dive into the Bible and talk about the Bible, why it's important, why it's accurate, why we can trust what it says, why what it says is actually true, and, and why it's so important to dive into it each and every single day, and how you can apply it to your life, and, and why you should apply it to your life, all right? So put down what you're doing, minimize all distractions, go to your room, go to the washroom, wherever you can find a quiet spot, and listen in, all right? So my thought for today is the Word of God is the only thing that does not change. The Word of God is the only thing that does not change. In life, students, I'm sure you know this, things change, people's, people change, seasons change, okay? Times of life change, but the Word of God will never change. The Word of God will never change. It will remain the same. Now, I want to ask you, why do you think... The Word of God is so important. Take a minute or like 10 seconds to just think about that. Why do you think the Word of God is so important? When you go to build something, if you've ever built something, you should know this. Let's, uh, let's say it's a shed. Okay, let's say it's a shed or some sort of huge structure. Most of the time, you have to make sure that the measurements you're taking are precise or what? The whole project could potentially fall apart or look off or look a little wonky and, and shaky possibly right and then what and then you have to go back and fix it and and you've wasted uh, all that time um, or it takes you double the time or triple the time to, uh, to, to to build that structure now the same can be true with our lives guys and and with the Word of God we measure our success in life by what the Word of God says the Bible this book right here, the Bible, is our manual for life, okay? If we don't follow it, we will end up in the wrong spot or realize that we wasted years of our life because we were doing things by the wrong measurement instead of this measurement right here. Regardless of who you are and, and how old you are, what your background is, your culture, whatever, we are all searching for something real. We're all searching for something meaningful, and we're all searching for something true and i unapolog unapologetically believe that that can come from what this manual says right here unapologetically okay um especially right now all right in these crazy times i'm sure you've seen it on the news and social media everyone is throwing their opinion out there everyone thinks that their opinion is the right one everyone and everything is polarized there's polarization within the polarization and so what do we do from here when that happens? What do we do? Where do we go? What do we turn to? Again, the Word of God, okay? Crazy fact for you. I'm sure maybe some of you already noticed, but the Bible is the number one selling book of all time. And it still is today. Number one of all time, all right? But it is the least read book. Some of you guys need to take your Bible off of your dusty old nightstand or night table or shelf or drawer or under your bed and you need to put your nose in that thing again because it's been too long all right and if you don't have one let me know i'll get you one okay over time guys personally over time over the course of my life i've come to learn that this book is the most reliable book i have ever dove into okay and uh, i'm sure that as a young person there's other books out there that may interest you more uh, that the bible uh, is not that exciting, but most of the time, compared to other books you're reading, okay, if you're reading at all, the Bible is factual and the stories in there actually happened. Yes, that's right. The Bible is actually filled with crazy stories and adventures that actually took place in a time in history, all right? So instead of escaping reality all the time into books that teaches you how to be, I don't know, maybe a a better gamer, okay? Try diving into the Bible. There's so many things uh, in life, guys, that we can look at for answers or, or guidance um, to find our standards and our measurements besides the Bible. 
for example, let's say science, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm not bashing science. I love science, and I actually believe God created science, and I actually believe that science can prove the existence of God in some cases. But hear me out. The problem with science, though, is that it changes all the time in so many ways, okay? In, in 2006, I don't know if you guys remember this, maybe you might not be old enough, that was uh, 14 years ago, yes, that's, that's correct math. 2006, all of a sudden, the definition of what was a planet changed. And yes, Pluto was snuffed out of space. Pluto was no longer considered a Bible, or a Bible, a planet. Pluto was no longer considered uh, a planet, but your anus was. Hmm. <laughs> Often people want to worship or follow the, the creation instead of the creator, okay, and, and what the creator has to say. Or if not science, okay, we, we can look at people, professionals, famous people, uh, people that you may admire, but even then, even then, guys, and obviously we know that people, some people can be, can be deceiving or mislead us, uh, whether it's on accident or on purpose, and uh, that's why you can't make people your life's measurement all the time, because even people change. Here's an example. In the 1950s, okay, uh, 1950s the 1960s, doctors and celebrities, okay, were actually doing radio and, and TV commercials advertising cigarettes saying that they were good for you. Obviously, we know that that's not true. They believe that cigarettes put a coating on your throat that actually helped with asthma and strep throat. They even went as far as advertising uh, that it helped moms, and not, not just moms in general, Pregnant moms, okay, as well, that it helped relieve stress. <laughs> now, that's partially true, I'm sure, but obviously it's not healthy. It's not healthy, okay? So again, whether it's science or whether it's people, they cannot be fully trusted all of the time because like most other things in this world, guys, they are constantly changing. And so if you measure your life by those standards, you're going to end up lost um, at a dead end, at a crossroad, or somehow just, just fall apart. And you're going to be swaying in the wind. Listen, God and His Word are the only constant in life. God and His Word are the only constant in life. The only thing that doesn't change and that can be fully trusted, okay, um, is the Bible and God's Word. You may not always understand what it says or what it means, but that's God. That's why God put people uh, in your life to help you with that. Ask questions if you don't understand, okay? Seek guidance and understanding. Don't just read something in the Bible, okay, and be like, oh, well, I don't get it, and then toss it off to the side and, and never pick it back up again. No, the Bible, guys, is accurate and true, and you can trust what it says. And again, if you don't understand what it says, ask someone in your life who maybe help you be able to help you understand it. Like me or some of your leaders here at youth, maybe your mom and dad, okay? Or a pastor or a teacher in your life. Guys, the Bible has over 5,000 prophecies in it. 5,000. And and over 2,500 of them, okay, of those prophecies, so that's, that's over half, okay? Uh, the ones that have been tied to historical events have already come to pass. Over half of those 5,000 prophecies have already come to pass. Listen, statistically, according to science, all right, that is deemed to be uh, in the realm of uh, impossibilities. It's impossible. It's, it's nothing short of a miracle. But with God, all things are possible. Just that alone, just that alone, amongst many other things, guys, that proves to me, at least to me, okay, that the Word of God is the most accurate and trustworthy measuring stick when it comes to leading my life so that I don't go off into a path that will leave me or lead me into 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 the wilderness okay into a desert or or um, watch what I think should be built um, in my life fall apart okay or or even watch my life itself 
fall apart. Often we want to build these things in our lives and they're no good for us and, 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 and they're actually doing more harm than, they, than we think they're actually doing good. And, and in our life begins to fall apart. Um, Pastor Ryan um, recently built a shed in his, in his yard. This thing is a beast, okay? I saw it in person. I was kicking it. I was taking a hammer to it, okay? This, this thing's not falling apart, okay? Um, he, he watched videos on YouTube, all right? Uh, he followed precise uh, steps. He used appropriate tools and, and material, and he took accurate measurements and, and leveled things out. Listen, this thing's a beast. Like I said, a storm could not take this thing out, okay? So, my opinion is this. Yes, the Word of God is life's best measuring tool. Listen, it's going to outlast any other book, any other theory, any other mindset or idea or opinion or popular thought, method or new age thing or way of thinking or person, okay? It is accurate. Guys, it is trustworthy. It is true. And when used and applied properly, Okay, when the storms of life come crashing in, okay, when disaster strikes, um, when crappy situations come your way, you will have a solid foundation to stand on called God's promise. Promise for a hope and a future as a child of God and as an overcomer and a promise that yes, what you're facing right now might be horrible and unpleasant and uncomfortable and, and, and sucky and sad, but there is hope at the end, okay? There is light at the end of the tunnel, all right? It gives you hope. This measuring step will give you hope and it'll actually guide you through that storm and, and tell you what to do when you're in it. And when de the deceiving thoughts of life or people come along and try to cause you to stray and go this way or that way or, or cope this way or cope that way, you'll be like, nah, bro. <laughs> nah, that's not what God's word says. Okay, you will be fully equipped, you will have wisdom, and, and I believe that if you keep the Word of God hidden in your heart, your mind, and your soul as it said it should be, keep this book, keep what it says hidden in your heart, your mind, and your spirit, guys, the possibilities are endless. All right, that's all I have to say. This thing is your life's measuring stick, and I hope that you begin to dive into it more than what you may be doing and uh, start applying it to your life. And yes, you can trust it. And yes, it is accurate. Okay, let's pray real quick. God, I thank you so much for who you are. And I thank you for the incredible love that you have for each and every single one of us. And uh, Lord, I thank you uh, that you have given us your word. God, your love letter to us, this uh, amazing book that we can trust, God, that we can lean into and lean on, um, God, in order to walk through life. And not just walk through life, God, but walk through the storms of life. God, I thank you that we can measure our life based on what this book says, based on what this manual says. God, I thank you that you will never fail us. I thank you that your promises are yes and amen. I thank you that you have your people's backs. I thank you that you see us. I thank you that you hear us. I thank you that you know us. And I thank you that you know more than anybody else how to guide us through our storms and, and how to uh, help us overcome. And God, your word says that because you, Jesus, overcame the grave and overcame sin and overcame the world, uh, we as well can overcome anything that faces our way because, God, you live in us. And, God, if there's people listening right now uh, in the sound of my voice that don't have you living in their lives, God, they haven't made a decision to follow you, um, Lord, I pray right now that they would make a decision to follow you. Um, and, God, I thank you that you are for us and that you are not against us. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And I pray all of this in your wonderful name, Jesus. And everybody said, come on, say it. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I will see you next Friday with part two. And uh, again, if you need to reach out, let me know. Don't be bashful. If you need a Bible, let me know. Don't be bashful. I will deliver one to your door. Okay. Uh, so make that your mission tonight before you go to bed. Get in the word. All right. Do the whole... Mm, if you want, all right, or Google something, man. Google a devotional. There's tons out there. If you have a hard time finding one, let me know. All right, love you guys. Take care and uh, be blessed tonight.